It's an honor to be here and, and share some of this stuff with you. I've spent the last few weeks here in the Amazon jungle following four youth ambassadors from my organization as they trekked around 100 miles through the deep Amazon, sharing their experiences every day, every step of the way with 16,000 students from around the globe who tracked their every move through a live website that we created, an educational website that was totally interactive where questions could be asked and answered and we streamed live video of their experiences like this. Rainforest, it's pouring rain. It's exactly what I thought the rainforest would be. This has got to be the coolest day of my life. I'm just, I'm on cloud, cloud nine right now. This is awesome. Right on. So my name is Ray, and I am the founder of this organization, Impossible to Possible. And I'm going to talk more about our experience-based learning programs and how we create these programs and these adventures in a couple of minutes. But I want to start a little bit further back about where the idea for this organization came to be. So check this out for a few minutes. It is the most unforgiving place on Earth. Over 3.5 million square miles. A vast wilderness. It is the Sahara Desert, with people and cultures as unpredictable as the landscape. Running 50 miles a day, it's the challenge. It's going the distance. It's just pushing myself to my limits. It's never been done. No one's ever run that far in that period of time. That will be tough. It's a mental thing, I think. Imagine running 50 miles per day for more than 100 days in an unprecedented personal challenge. Three ultra runners, good friends, test physical strength and mental toughness running across the entire Sahara Desert. They're such high-end athletes. They're used to pushing themselves, but they're going to be pushing their bodies more than they ever have in the past. We've had injury. We've had sickness. Sorry, dude. The best thing to do would be to stop for the day, but we have to cover some miles today. Any Americans found there without proper paperwork are going to be considered spies, liable to execution. We You're going to have to make the best decision for us as a team. It's so difficult for me because the personalities are so different. I don't want to push us into the ground, obviously, but I'll push us damn close. This is, you know, a lot tougher than you could have ever thought. You can do this. You don't want to quit. Okay. <laughs> we saw a young boy, seven or eight years old, in the desert alone, fending for himself while his dad was a two days walk away to get water. That's the water situation. I mean, it's so much bigger an issue than I would have ever thought. Narrated by executive producer Matt Damon and directed by James Mall, a personal and compelling journey into the world's most mysterious wilderness. The purpose of the three of us coming here was to learn more about each other, to learn about the people of the Sahara, and to do something that hasn't been done before. They all three agreed that if one runner went down, they would be out of the expedition. I thought your commitment was different than that. When is the end? The end is when we get to Cairo. It will be a life-changing experience, and not just for the three runners, for everybody who's along on this journey. Okay, so on November 1st, 2006, my two best friends and I set out on a journey that everybody said was impossible. We ran across the entire Sahara Desert, from the west coast to the east coast, through six countries, 7,500 kilometers. If you think about it, it's almost like running from St. John's, Newfoundland, to Vancouver in the sand. Some basic stats, it took us 111 days, averaging 70K a day without a single day of rest. We had five immediate support crew the entire time to help us make our way. Probably the most difficult part of the expedition was the fact that we had two showers the entire time in 111 days that we were out there. So you can imagine how funky we were. But we weren't going to get lost in any sandstorms. That was a guarantee, right? I mean, this expedition was epic for us, and it taught us so much more than you would think. It was, of course, this epic run, this journey of 7,500K across the Sahara Desert. But it taught us more than our capability as athletes. We learned about the people of the Sahara, the kindness and generosity of these amazing people in the Northern Sahara. And we learned about something else, day-to-day -day life in the Sahara, how precious clean drinking water is to the people of this region of the world. 
I had no idea, coming from this amazing country of Canada, how fortunate I was every day to just turn the tap on and water magically appeared. Here, this is where you're sourcing your water from, and sometimes it's not safe to drink. We finished this expedition after 111 days of running, and I taught, thought to myself, you know, I've got to do something with this experience. After all, it taught me that we are capable of some pretty extraordinary things. When I put my hands in that water, into the Red Sea, after running for 111 days, at around 37-ish, 38 years of age, I'd been running for three years. I myself was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day seven years before the day I finished my run across the Sahara. If there's hope for me, we can do anything. We totally underestimate what we as human beings are capable of doing. That's what this expedition taught me. And it also taught me that my world faces many issues. What can we do about this? I finished the run, and my wife and I and some buddies got together, and we thought, hey, you know, Ray definitely is not an academic, and he's never going to be a great businessman, but he can run really, really far. And maybe there's a way to take these adventures that he does and use them in a way to inspire, educate, and empower an entire generation of young people to know that you don't have to wait to be 40 like me to figure out that you can do anything that you set your mind to. And you can do things in a very relevant way day to day, socially, environmentally, and otherwise, in your community. We decided that the first expedition that we would create an educational theme and a story about was in the exact opposite region than the Sahara. This is the South Pole, the top of the bottom of the world, and we three Canadians, two other buddies of mine, and I set the world record for trekking to the South Pole unsupported. That means we spent 33 days, 23 hours, and 55 minutes dragging all of our supplies with us, including communications equipment and food, everything we would need to survive on this epic journey to the bottom of the earth, right? It was amazing. Of course, it was incredible to experience temperatures hitting, you know, in the way minuses and, and how difficult it was physically and be able to share that day to day with students. But there, there was the magic. You know, the world record wasn't owed to us. It was owed to the thousands of our teammates around the world who we communicated with and answered questions with day to day while we were out there on this expedition, essentially bringing the expedition into the classroom and the classroom onto the expedition. True experiential learning. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for our teammates, we probably would have never got there. But the questions that they were asking and the answers that we felt we needed to deliver were so compelling. We decided as an organization in 2009, this organization Impossible to Possible, we could amp things up. It's one thing for me to go out there and do these projects. It's another for you, this audience, to get out there and do these expeditions and experience the things that we're experiencing and you share peer to peer your experiences every minute of an expedition. Our organization selected five youth ambassadors. There are no cost to any of the youth ambassadors that come on our expeditions or to any of the schools that participate in our educational programs. We subsidize everything through the generous support of our partners. So five youth ambassadors from all over North America got together and they trekked in October 2009 across Baffin Island. Once again, unsupported, carrying all of the gear, everything they would need to cross this epic part of Northern Canada. The topic of the educational material for this expedition was how our world is changing from a climate perspective and how that's affecting people that live in areas that are typically very colder in that Arctic region. It was an amazing experience and you can see just from this bits of video and some of these incredible photographs how something like this can be very difficult. 17, 18, 19 years old, you haul 65 pounds of gear onto your back and you start walking through bog and across you know, glacial moraine, living out of your tent day to day eating dehydrated food, but of course, not getting away from school. You see, all of the youth ambassadors that are out there with us are learning in the great outdoors, the classroom of the lo expedition location. This is Dr. Ewan Affleck from Yellowknife. He's our educational director, and here he is talking about some of the issues, and he's looking at a glacier across the way which has receded tremendously in just the past few years. We share this, as I said, using technology in ways that perhaps it wasn't actually intended for. I come with the, these ideas to my technical team and I say, you know what we need to do? Be able to email students or answer questions from the Arctic. And they say, well, you can't do that. And then I say, well, maybe you could try and find a way. So they say, all right, we'll take a satellite phone. We'll attach a modem to it. We'll use marine software and we'll be able to answer those questions. And that's what you see here. So it's worked out really well and it was brilliant to be able to share this experience again, as I said, across this epic part of northern Canada, this beautiful area, our Arctic. Isn't that photo ridiculous? It doesn't look real, right? But it's real. 
I'd have to say the most empowering part of that expedition, beyond anything for sure, was to see how students in classrooms were responding to our five youth ambassadors, how they were able to relate, relate completely with the struggles that they faced on this expedition. We thought, sky's the limit. This is amazing. How can we make this even better? April 2010, we selected four youth ambassadors and said, let's push the limits of endurance even further. And let's go back to our roots, which is talking about water, as I learned about running the Sahara. Four youth ambassadors selected, ran a marathon a day across a section of the Tunisian Sahara. Everything they would learn about water and about the people of that region of the desert, they would share once again day to day, this time with live video streaming into classrooms. We used a BGAN, a device that would help us to attract a satellite signal, and these students would talk about, as they were running day to day across Tunisia, and the people they were meeting, what they were learning about water, and how precious a resource it is to this region. Students were challenged in classrooms, from the four youth ambassadors that were out there, to do something, the empowering part of impossible to possible. Do something about water. So, with social entrepreneurial programs, schools ranging from elementary to high school, we're fundraising to build two water projects in Africa, and I'm proud to say that one of those projects has been funded and built already. It's amazing to see what the power of youth can be, and we were seeing it day to day in this expedition in Tunisia. As I said, learning from the people of this region of the Sahara and sharing it with one another as they made their way up to 40 kilometers, close to a marathon a day. Wake up every morning, put their backpacks on, strap on a tracking device because the live website was live. And schools could see any minute of the day, every step that they were taking. If you went like this around the desert, you could see them going like that. It was incredible. Of course, answering those questions, as we said before. Streaming video at specific times. Every second day, we would stream in, and we would have live Q&A. We would talk about water. We would also talk about how difficult it is to run in knee-deep sand sometimes. Take a look at some of these photos, and you can see some of the terrain that these four incredible youth adventurers crossed. These are, it's just epic. But still, you could give that very real experience of how hot it was and how deep the sand was and physically how difficult it was and the toughest days were tough. But they overcame and they were able to achieve and finish their expedition. And so, their teammates in the classrooms got to share in that success as well. Now I'm losing my mic, so I'm gonna do this. You can see here's the communication equipment that we use. This is the BGAN device on the cooler. That is not a beer beside the cooler. And that's our camera that we were going to video conference with. And so day to day, as I said, the technology that we used allowed our youth ambassadors to take their laptop and basically point it to sand dunes and say, we just ran across those sand dunes. This is what it feels like to be in 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Also, the youth ambassadors, and this is a really cool part, we were able to take video journals of themselves with flip cams. We would edit that content and upload it directly to CNN, and CNN would broadcast their stories day to day. Here's some footage. Yeah. Here, turn away to this here in the middle of the in desert well. in a well. And this is this is the stuff. This is what we're talking about. This is exactly what Ryan's Well Foundation and what Giving Water Foundation. That's what we're trying to raise money for. This is a well. This is, this is the this stuff. Is what it's all about. This oasis here. Um, there's some people you can see with um, water jugs over there. I don't know how far they come to get this water, but um, this is just incredible. This oasis. And um, I mean, we're a small organization that's trying very desperately to make learning fun again, to bring experiences into the classroom where students want to learn, want to experience something more than just opening up a random textbook and trying to memorize stuff bringing the classroom, as I said, around the world and bringing students around the world to do these things. You know, they say that you cannot look into the future. We can't determine with 100% accuracy what's going to happen in the future. But I've seen incredible things that this generation has done. And from the viewpoint, from where I'm standing on this stage, the future looks unbelievably bright and positive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.